we are our own special music again this morning. Amen. Amen. We have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. Worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lift up holy hands and worship him. And also forget about yourself and just concentrate on him. And worship him this morning. If you don't mind standing, please. And we can all sing this song. We have come into this house together in his name to worship him. We Jesus Christ, 
आलो Amen you may be seated Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise God Amen church Amen We are here to worship him He is in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we want to give him the honor and the reverence as due his name. Amen. We want to praise him. We want to thank Jesus. him thank and bless him. Yes. This morning I want to speak to you on the topic God's promise for today. Yes. God's promise for today. You notice I didn't say God's promise for yesterday. I said God's promise for today. Amen. Something that uh, applies to our situation situation right now. And uh, before we look at the text, I want to invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, Lord, touch us where we need. Uh, comforting where we need healing and pray that you give us uh, a revelation from your throne as we are in your presence in Jesus name amen. amen my text is taken from uh, Psalm 37 and I want to zero in on verse 4 Uh, we read the uh, passage uh, verses 1 through 7 but we want to just uh, back up and zero in on one uh, text and, uh, and if we have time we'll deal with the rest of it but uh, the Bible says delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart Uh, what a wonderful promise. Amen. I think it's good for us to, to, to just recognize that God's promises are not like man's promises. Amen. Have you ever had someone promise you something? Mm -hmm. You got all excited. Maybe it was a person of uh, uh, means or a person that was going to give you a job. He handed you his card and he said, I'll call you, I'll call you. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but you never heard back. Mm -hmm. Someone made a promise, but they didn't keep that promise. Well, with God's promises, mm -hmm. you can always take his promises to the bank. Amen. Uh, as the song we sang this morning, we can stand on the promises, Amen. on his promises. Now, the text says, delight thyself in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That's a magnificent promise. Yes, it is. Um, so what it's saying is, if I delight myself in the Lord, he's going to do something very special for me. He's going to give me the desires of my heart. Yes. What does your heart want this morning? What does your heart pray for? What does your heart believe right now it needs be careful be, be careful because Jeremiah 17 9 says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked who can know it so why would God give you and I the desires of our hearts and our hearts are deceitful untrustworthy and desperately wicked hmm. a lot of things we want that are not good for us um, but the Bible here is not just talking about any kind of heart it's talking about a sincere heart a pure heart a, a heart that has been stripped from all of ex externals and all of the crud and all of the build up a heart that has been softened and subdued delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of that kind of heart 
God says, if you delight in me, I will give you not what you think you want, but will give you what you really want. Yes. Jeremiah says your heart is desperately wicked. So a lot of times we think we want something and it's not good for us. And there are some things that are good for us we don't even know we need. Amen. That's the truth. Oftentimes we don't know what we want. We don't know what to ask for. That's why uh, 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 Paul says... Uh, we sometimes don't know what to pray for as we ought. And we need the Spirit to make intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered by us. Yes. We don't know what we want. Our true desires of our hearts are often confused with the desire of our brain. Or the desire of our flesh. Or the desire of our appetites. And so we pray to the Lord for desires that are carnal. Desires from a messed up heart or polluted heart. And then James says we ask amiss so that we can consume it on our desires. But see, God promises to give us the desires of our hearts, but our desires are shaped and molded by culture, by the exposure, and by training. And you can just only desire what you know. If I had an orange, I, I would use it as a demonstration. But an orange on the outside is, doesn't look edible. Let's imagine that you, someone gave you an orange, and this is the first time you, you saw an orange. And they said, eat it. Well, looking at the orange from the outside doesn't look edible. You know, it's got this big, thick coat of orange. But it's not until you peel it back that you begin to see that that orange has something pretty good in it. Right? So our desires have been shaped, have been molded by culture and by training and by exposure. You can't desire what you don't know. It's like the potatoes. The early settlers, settlers that came to America saw potatoes growing up out of the ground and heard the rumor that those things were poison. But one day somebody said, I'm hungry. Let's, why don't we just boil it? Maybe that'll kill the germs in it. They boiled it and they tasted the potato and said, this is pretty good. You don't know something's good for you until you've been exposed. And it just turns out that potatoes have potassium and other nutrients that are, that are good for us. And they're not poison. It's one of my favorite foods, potatoes. There are certain fruits that look ugly on the outside, but when you're exposed to them, uh, you know, they're part of your favorites. Mm -hmm. How many have said before marriage, I would never marry a man like that? Mm -hmm. It's not on, on the list of things that I, I'm looking for. All right, stop now, I never marry a woman like that. She's not on the list that, I'm, that I was looking for. But then you were exposed to something that you thought you wouldn't like and discover that you did like it a whole lot, right? And you went on and married that person because you were exposed. And you were left with the realization, well, this is what I really wanted. A man that works right BMW we used to say that and uh, didn't have to look a certain way and learn that you had peace brought you comfort you know took care of you but you didn't know that before why because you haven't been exposed and the desires of our hearts are that way 
Once God gets a hold of you and starts revealing stuff to you and, and begins to work on you and begins to peel back that heart, the, the layer uh, of the heart, the superficial stuff, and it takes you through experiences and takes you through trials and exposes you to new things, once God gets through with you, you say, Lord, whatever you want, that's what I want. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart. But the true desires of your heart, not what you think you need. Because you really don't know what you need. You and I don't know what we want. And that's why Jesus said, without me, you can't even desire right. You can't even want right. Without me, you can do nothing. And this, this, this is true in all areas of life. You know, you don't know what you want until you're exposed. My wife uh, had been trained as a teacher and she's worked in different areas and different positions. And one day she sat in a, uh, or subbed in, a, a, in a, a special education class. Right? Just sub, not really, you know, was really involved in it, but just sat in it and said, I never want to do that. <laughs> No, no, let, let me just, you know, be with uh, like 20, 25 kids. But discovered that she'd rather work with a few kids. And so one day uh, there was a, and this is years later, that, uh, and, and very recently, um, she submitted a request to sub, and they call you and they let you know what's available. And she put in everything but special education. But somehow there was a computer glitch mm -hmm. <laughs> that put her in special education and it was too late to change it. But remember, when she woke up that morning, she prayed, thy will be done. Right? So it's not what she chose, but ended up going to that special education class and discovered something she didn't know she wanted. She sensed God putting a desire in her heart for special education. Would not have chosen, but God chose it for her. And uh, found fulfillment that she hadn't found before. Found a fruitful field for ministry, smaller class size that she could handle. And discovered something that she didn't know was there. The desire of her heart. Yeah. And if you don't mind, uh, Sheena, there was a, a, a young boy uh, in the class, and uh, she was trying to get them to do an assignment. She said, well, you have to do this if you want to go to college. Now, we're talking about sixth graders, you know. And so about a week later, there were some kids that were kind of acting up. And she said, you all need to be quiet because I want to go to college. <laughs> you know, he's a young boy, you know. I want to go to college. Y'all need to straighten up, you know. And up until that time, the boy hadn't even thought of college, but you just had this teacher coming in there with a, 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 a broader view of what you could be. Presented that to the children most people have kind of gave up on, and the boy says, I want to go to college. Planning dreams and desires in young people. What could be more fulfilling than that? He'll give us the desires of our hearts. Doesn't mean it's going to be a rose garden. Yes, there will be challenges. But God promises to do that for us. But brothers and sisters, the promise is given on condition. Verse 4 says, you must delight thyself in the Lord. Don't look for God to give you the desires of your heart if you don't delight yourself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the Lord, if you don't like the things of God, if you don't reverence the things that God reverence, if you don't love the things that God love, you must discover and must be preoccupied with delighting in the Lord. You must discover that God is delightable. Yes, yes. You must take the time to see that God is 
is delightable. You can't just be so consumed with making a living, consumed with making ends meet, consumed with doing what you want to do, and not spending time with God. We delight in a lot of things, don't we? I delight in a lot of things. I won't say everything that I'm, I delight in. But we all delight in certain things. And I, you know, I, I like sorrow, but I'm not crazy about it. Y'all know what sorrow is, right? Sorrow. Tell them what sorrow is. <laughs> it's a bad It's a bad one. Well, I, you know, sorrow is okay with me, right? Uh, I like sorrow, but I never really delighted in sorrow until a couple of weeks ago, Brother Strachan, some of you remember him, uh, sent a bottle to me by way of Sister Henry and uh, said, uh, you know, why don't you just try this? And I could have said, ah, you know, I, it's, it's okay, no thank you. You know, sorrow to me used to taste like uh, Kool-Aid with ginger in it, right, with sugar. That, that's what it was. But when I tasted this sorrow made by Brother Stratton, it had the, just the right amount of sweetness. It had a little buzz to it. It had a little kick to it. It had the right herbs in it. It was a kind of a health sorrow. I never tasted anything like that. And it went down smooth and right. And when I got through with it, I said, I got to get me some more of this. And the fact that I said that meant that I delighted in that thing. Because yes. you don't, when you want some more of something, that means you delight in it. But I would not have known unless I tasted it. Right? Right. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And you won't know that the Lord is good until you taste. The Lord is delightable, brothers and sisters. Yes, he is. Yes. You will have challenges yes, he will. when you love what the Lord loves. You love righteousness. Uh, keep on delighting in the Lord. Some of us once delighted in the Lord and we kind of step back from that real close relationship. You got to return and delight in the Lord. Because he says, then I will give you the desires of your heart, what you really, truly need. Mm -hmm. And it's not based on age because you, you, you can be old and not know what you need. Yes. But it's better to be young, serve the Lord, and let him give you the desires of your heart. Delighting in the Lord means to love what God loves. God loves the Bible. I love the Bible. God loves people. I love people. God loves the spirit of prophecy. I love the spirit of prophecy. God loves prayer. I love prayer. God loves evangelism. I love evangelism. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the petitions. In other words, the prayers of your heart. Brothers and sisters, I'm glad that God gives us experiences that causes us to delight in him. On Thursday, I misplaced my wallet and uh, looked in the house, looked everywhere I had been and recognized that I had been to the store. Maybe I left it at the store. Maybe it fell out of my pocket in the parking lot. And the store was Tops. You know where Tops Market is on Salina? Okay. Yeah, right down the street. And I said, oh, no. So I'm looking around and worrying and everything, and I'm halfway praying in my mind, you know. And now I'm thinking all of the frustration. Now I've got to change all my cards and all of that. And then I was brought to my knees. I said, you know, I just better pray. And so I fell on my knees and said, Lord, you remember the last time I lost my wallet and, and you preserved it and helped me find it and gave it back to me. And, and God loves it when we recount what he did in the past, right? 
because that's that's a way of building faith looking at the evidence of evidences of how he's worked in the past gives us more faith for the future and God loves for us to have faith because he says without faith it is impossible to please him so I'm going through this list of mine and, and I'm at a point now I'm humble my heart is almost empty I'm not thinking I've got to find it I'm saying Lord you find it and I got up off my knees and right in front of me on the right above the fireplace was my wallet stare, not hidden on anything. It was just there open. How did I miss it? Maybe an angel placed it there. I don't know what happened. But I thank God that he answered prayer. And it is when God answers prayers like that that you discover that God is delightable. He's worthy of our worship and worthy of serving him. Amen. Jesus came in contact with a demon-possessed man while he was teaching, and the demon ran up on him and said, uh, Jesus, son of David, I know who you are. Have you come to destroy us before the time? This is a demon-possessed man speaking to Jesus in the middle of Jesus doing good. And Jesus simply rebuked him. Now you would think that by the way he addressed Jesus that it meant that he respected his authority. But no, he was saying, you are the Holy One of God, but you come to destroy people, which is an insult. Mm. But if you read the Desire of Ages, quote on this, um, the story it says that the the man was wanting to see Jesus but when he opened his mouth the demon spoke through him in other words he had lost control of his faculties everything that the demon told him to do he could not do otherwise he was completely possessed by a devil but Desire, Desire of Ages says, but Jesus heard his heart cry. Even when he couldn't speak for himself, Jesus knew what his heart was saying. In spite of the fact, he was completely possessed. And brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people in the world today that are completely possessed. And they do things not because they want to, because they're controlled. Mm -hmm. That man that killed all those kids in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been angry as a child. I know what it's like to be angry. Angry at other kids. But I would never shoot innocent kids. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, this is the act of demons who have taken control over every faculties. And the mind does what the demons tell them to do. The demons told this young man to say what he said. But Jesus looked past his, cons his, his, his inability to have self-control and heard what his heart was saying. And brothers and sisters, Jesus hears every sincere prayer we make. He can get down into our hearts. So, only someone who made the heart understands what the heart needs. And this promise says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now some of us may not really know what's in store for us as children of God. Maybe we haven't been exposed yet. I don't understand what heaven is like. The Bible says, I have not seen nor ear heard, have even entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared. But we get a little foretaste every now and then. And God has something very special for us. But if you just base your relationship on God, on the fact that he is delightable, that he means us good. He died to save us. Mm -hmm. And so he's asking us to taste and see mm -hmm. that he's good.
And tasting means not just taking one sip and, and putting him down, but it is to live by every word, to drink his blood and to eat his flesh every day, to be consumed by him, to be strengthened by him, to be sustained by him. That's the relationship that he's calling us today. And then he will give us the desires of, of our hearts. And brothers and sisters, our desires is one day to see him face to face, one day to live with him in paradise. That's, that's what we really want. We don't know it yet. We've gotten so accustomed and so acculturated to life here on earth. But once we get a little taste, we've got to delight ourselves in the Lord. We've got to cultivate delighting in the Lord. So my appeal this morning is that we take that time and renew our commitment to delighting ourselves in the things of, of the Lord. That we give God a chance to show us something we didn't know. That we give God a chance to direct our lives, our careers, our majors, our choice of occupation. We don't know. We need to follow, education page 267, we need to follow more closely God's plan of life to do our best work in the work that lies near us, to commit our ways to God and to watch for the indications of providence. These are rules that ensure a safe guidance in the choice of an occupation. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. How many want that this morning? Sister Henry, you, you just missed uh, a story about you. <laughs> so you ask somebody <laughs> what happened. But uh, if you want to delight yourself in the Lord, you want him to give you the desires of, uh, of your heart. And you agree to be divested of all of the stuff that you have, been, you have learned in this world. All of the stuff that's on your heart that shapes what you think you want. You agree to allow God to strip you down to the bare bones. So now you're completely clear for God to, to identify what you really need and you're more willing to accept that. If that's your desire, stand to your feet. And we want to have prayer for you this morning. We're saying, Lord, we give you permission to give us the desires of our heart. And whatever you have to take away out of our heart to make that happen, yes, we give you permission to do that. Yes. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you move past our limitations. When we can't speak, you go further and read what we really desire when our hearts are putting on and and trying to spiff itself up and you can go past all of the superficial stuff and see our real need and not only that you can make us satisfied with the things that you provide and so lord whatever you have to do make that happen we pray for every young person here that uh